This college basketball picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100, and get a $100 free bet at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. We're also brought to you by the SGPN Bowl Challenge. $250 cash and a $250 gift card is up for grabs exclusively on the SGPN app. This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN Let It Ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Ho- Hokies in the top twenty-five, Sean. Hokies in the top twenty-five. Uh, we are joined here by Colby Dant, uh, aka the Dantabase, aka Pick Dundee. What's up, Pick? Ah, uh, you know, it's been better days. Yeah, we um, we're doing this college basketball picks podcast, and then uh, this afternoon, four o'clock Pacific, we're going to be doing a Mike Leach uh, tribute. Obviously, Mike Leach passed away. He was a true friend of the program, but um, you know, we're going to break down some clips, share some good moments there. So, if uh, if you're listening to this live and you still have time, you can tweet at Gambling Podcast. There are so many great moments of Mike Leach. It's really going to be hard to find. Uh, some of our favorites. I was re-listening to some, and uh, it'll be a it'll be a good tribute to an awesome guy. So stay tuned for that at four o'clock Pacific, and of course uh, wherever you get your pods. But we're here to talk some college hoops. Kramer, I know you're uh, you're, you're you're like uh, you got a spring in your step. Giants uh, are hitting the wall; they're falling apart. Uh, Hokey football program completely devastated. Ah! Seems like you're 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 going all in on uh, the hokey basketball team. Sean, you you will love this and and shout out to uh too deep uh favorite hokey podcast out there. Tweeted out a side by side of Jalen Hurts squatting with now I'm, who's the new recruit they just brought in from Baylor, I think it is. The Texas kid. Yeah, four star. Anyway, he him squatting six hundred pounds. Jalen Hurts squatting six hundred pounds. So <laughs> a little crossover into the world. Uh, look, football team got some. They're they're doing some positive things. Uh, went and watched some film. That ODU receiver looks like a grown ass man and still in college. He's played a, a number of Jennings. Years. He's a beast. And yeah. so all right, so positive things are still happening. The social media team that they brought in with all the millions of dollars in support staff has something to do. Good. But we are a basketball school right now, Sean, because mm. honestly, I, I think, you know, Seth Greenberg is often given credit for repairing the or starting the build of the Hokie program. I have randomly a basketball signed by him over my shoulder that's turned more into something ironic. He was not a good coach for the program. He brought them to the doorstep every year and failed. And most importantly, he didn't <laughs> recruit Steph Curry or Seth Curry. Ryan's still really mad about that. He I, he talks to us every week like he's a fucking expert. He didn't recruit Steph Curry's younger brother after that happened. Like, how do you fuck that up anyway? That's at all time. That's Mike all Young time is now here, and Colby and I were discussing this. Not that we're a fan of the polls, and not that it really matters in college basketball. You're talking basketball polls, not the Polacks, right? Uh, well, the Polish in general. I do feel bad for the jokes about the polls because there's <laughs> lots of dumb uh, countries out there. <laughs> yes, polls seem to get it for all of them. But yeah, no, the 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 the, the AP poll, uh, the coaches poll, it does seem a little disrespectful that my Hokies are barely in the top twenty-five. Yeah, no, completely. They're flying under the radar, and there's a lot of disrespect. They have a, a couple teams with one... three losses ahead of them. Uh, Ken, Ken Palm has you twenty-ninth, Ryan. Oh, oh. 
I can't remember. Oh, what are you a what are you a fucking spreadsheet now? Games are played <laughs> on a court, Sean. No, I'm saying that's good. I can't remember the last time. When was the last time they oh, were they, top they, thirty in Ken Pop? They were. They probably flirted near there at times last year. I, I will say that the the surprising thing about this team, if you look at that. Uh, those numbers is that the, the it's the offense, it's not the defense, and so I think there's still room to grow. You'll if you watch the post game pressers, not to make this a Hokies pod, but my, Mike Young's theme of every post game press conference is how he doesn't want to take anything away from the other team, but <laughs> shucks his team didn't play the best I, effort. I, I'm just laughing because I just remembered we were walking around down at a uh, college station there. Uh, we went, I forget what it was. We had to grab something out of the truck and then we, or we dropped the truck off at the parking. We're walking back to the tailgate and Ryan goes, wait, I got to get a photo. And there's a, there's a big photo of buzz Williams <laughs> on the Texas A and M college uh, basketball arena. And uh, Kramer went all the way out of his way to get a photo with buzz Williams. I've never heard Ryan say, wait, I got to get a photo mm. in my entire life. Mm. Mm. Un because unlike Seth Greenberg, your love of buzz he, is pretty hilarious. He Well, not only is he an absolute uh, like, my, you know, tying it to Coach Leach, like Coach Leach, Leach is a treasure for the things that he said. Well, Buzz Williams is a treasure for the motivational, like like posters that he can create. He is a masterful motivator and good recruiter. He actually fixed the program. The reason Mike Young is having success today is because Buzz Williams took him to that point. He didn't take him to the doorstep and keep fucking smash his head to the the fucking wall because he <laughs> forgot the keys. Like Seth Greenberg, complete idiot, didn't recruit. Steph Curry. All right. But that is a lot of Hokies basketball what talk. What do you mean? That's it? I don't get any more time? <laughs> Where do you got to go, Sean? I got to go over to winbet.com slash or sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet. I got to sign up. I got to get my $100, uh, $100 free bet. Am I going back east for the holidays? Will I be driving to Phillipsburg, PA, only 15 minutes away, so I can hang out in a diner, get my $100 free bet on WinBet? You're damn right I am. Will I be spinning that parlay wheel? You're damn right I am. Will I be building my own WinBet in beautiful Phillipsburg, PA, at a sweet diner? You know it. Gonna bring all my tools back in. Hey, if you're in a WinBet state, if you're even near a WinBet state, head there now. SportsGamblingPodcast.com. Slash win bet. Sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. Just to be clear, you're talking about Phillipsburg, New Jersey? Yeah, what did I say? Phillipsburg, PA? Yeah. Nope, Phillipsburg, New Jersey, Ryan. Right along, uh, was that 78? Yeah. It's good dead Steiner country, right? Offer subject exchange if you or someone you know has a gambling problem. Call 1 800 522 47 hundred. Not uh, in Easton, across the river from Phillipsburg, is the Crayola experience. Not to be confused with the college experience. Ooh, oh, ooh. there you go. Full oh. coming full uh, full head. Make sure you check out College Basketball Experience Daily Picks Pod with uh, Pick Dundee and Moneyline Mac. Uh, I, a lot of fun. I, I and I'd also like to challenge the audience to find another show. Have you missed the day? Oh no. So every single day there's been college basketball. You've put out a podcast. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, so fi if you can find us a show that can match that outside of our buddy hoops, Peterson, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's and, go. And you know what? Ask your favorite provider why they aren't going daily. Like the, like pick Dundee over here. Yes, sir. I feel like the audience needs to need, we need some acts of aggression, you know? <laughs> oh, it's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> No, oh, I like that. I don't even know what he's talking about. I like it. Should All right, we, let's should talk. We, should we teach a class on tactical warfare? No. Oh, <laughs> Insurgent would love to. warfare. I'd yeah. love to. All right. Uh, quick update on the picks. We went, we all went right down the line last week. Uh, 500 each hit a lock. So that's nice. The discord. It looked like it was going to be a day for the discord as we started off cold in the picks we agreed on, but another break even point, Sean, we still haven't defeated the discord. We need to defeat them one another week. It, it's going to feel good. Well, you keep piping them up, Ryan. You're, you're, ah, you're, you're, you need you're pumping heal. them up. You need a heel to be motivated. <laughs> Stay laser focused. 4 PM. We're talking Wednesday, December 14th, 4 PM on the West coast, 7 PM on the East coast, heading to Akron, Ohio, Wright state, Akron, Akron lane, six and a half. Sean, these are actual lines. Shout okay. out to shout out to the world for getting these numbers out here. Nice and early for us. Akron lane, six and a half. 
Colby, I'll let you lead off on this one. I guess I, you told me the slate was great today, but then I look up and down and I see it. Uh, no, it's the best slate of the week. Oh no. Yeah. Best slate of the so week. It's just a down week. For yeah. college basketball. Uh, finals as, as NC oh. Nick said, it's finals <laughs> week. Finals. They, they go a little lighter. They go a little lighter on the schedule. <laughs> that makes Man. sense actually. Um, but this is a good, this is a good matchup uh, to, to, uh, to Ohio schools there, you know, right state located in yeah. Dayton. And uh, two teams that realistically can make the NCAA tournament. And you know, you were talking, you were just talking Mike young. Well, grant grant Basile, uh, yes. is a right state transfer. Oh, it's he a good looks program. so good. It's a good program. So, uh, was he this good for them last yeah, year? Yeah, He oh was good goodness. last year and and they've looked pretty damn good this year. I know you look at the record and say five and five, he's like Luca up, out there, the yeah. shots, the passing, the defense. If you pull up their losses, they're all two respectable opponents. They're a pretty good team. Uh, so it would not surprise oh, no. me at all if you saw them in March. But I like dancing. the Mac, Colby. Yeah, I like I like uh, I like the Mac. In the but I, what I like is you know, we're talking uh, offensive rebounding. Oh. Wright State is actually we're really good at stopping offensive rebounding, seventh in the nation, and they're uh, much better free throw percentage yes. uh, than Akron. Almost, you know, if you're going to talk road, you know, uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out. Rights, yeah, they're not. Uh, I, right, right State tenth in the nation in field goal. I, I'm trying to yeah. wrap my head around why Right State is getting this many points. If they can hit field goals, if they can do some stuff on the glass, and and to Colby's point, they can hit some shots. I, I'm definitely taking Right State in the points. The only thing we got to make sure they do is defend the three. Uh, Akron say, can hit the three well. They don't play defense. That would be the angle for why they are going to lose by a lot of points is they don't play defense, but Akron uh, 281st in the nation at hitting the three. So I, I like her chances. Let's go. I'm going to take, I'm going to take the Raiders of Wright state too. the real Raiders Kramer. All right. Give me, I'll get it on an Island. Cause you know, I like my Mac teams. Give me the zips. It is curious. Zip that it up and zip it out. <laughs> it is curious that they're laying six and a half. That's the only thing that interests me in Akron. Well, let me see if there's any sort of betting data. We should at least we should at least make sure the audience has access to all the data. Uh, all right, I'll I'll come back to it. Ohio, uh, Florida, another four p.m. tip out here on the West Coast. Tampa, Florida. Uh, this is a neutral site, I assume. What are we doing? Some yeah, sort of I, classic. I, I am not sure myself. Wow. I was a oh, bit surprised. Jesus. I thought this was in Gainesville, and then when we were just like right before we hit record, I was like, "Wait, this Tampa. is in." There's strip clubs in Tampa. Are either <laughs> team getting there ahead of time? I'm do trying to understand if this is Hashtag if this is called a classic. Only. No, I do not. I, it's I'm not, a not classic. seeing. It's just that. a neutral. Let me. You know who's really good about this stuff? Maybe uh, they just wanted to hit the strip clubs. Well, that that might be a problem, but. Uh, Shout out to Ken Palm because he does give you good, uh, good data on uh, the where. It, yeah, it's just a, it's a se- he, he's calling it a semi home game for Florida. Obviously, I yeah, I don't see any data on why they're playing there. Well, I mean, Ohio. You look at the record once again. F- you see five and four. They had a close loss, overtime loss at Michigan. Uh, they're a pretty damn good team. They also had a one point loss at Belmont. Uh, meanwhile, Florida, you know, coming off of just a royal ass whooping, uh, UConn went down to Gainesville and just dealt him one. Uh, I I think you gotta take the Bobcats here. I think Ohio is going to be able to keep this game close. Yeah. I mean, you look at their offensive stats, like shooting percentage, effective field goal percentage. I mean, they're neck and neck. And if, if Ohio can hang with them uh, offensively, and you're giving them 12 and a half. That feels pretty crazy. And Ohio, 36 in the nation and rebounding. I think they're going to be able to get a bunch of shots up and you know hitting them at a decent mark. This should be. I think this should be at the very least a game. I don't know if I like Ohio on the money line, but I definitely like 12 and a half. That feels way too high. Yeah, and, and look, they're no stranger to facing elite big men. I know Colin Castleton is an elite big man, but Hunter Dickinson, uh, Ohio yeah. just played Hunter Dickinson not that long ago. Uh, that game was was a wild one. I think they cover the twelve and a half, and like you said, I don't think it's that crazy to think of a money line play. I think this is going to be a game. Yeah, I'm just uh, tracing this down to a, a Rothstein report. It looks like it's just a old fashioned neutral site college basketball game. You strip don't see clubs, these, uh, you know, you know, that's <laughs> a strip club game, often. man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm with you guys, and, and of course, you don't need to sell me on taking a MAC team in any un, un, under any circumstances. I do worry a little bit about. I would like to know if Ohio's chop, get, 
Yeah. Is Ohio getting there the night before? Because that that would affect my handicap. There are a lot of a lot of. Uh, but do you think are the Gators fans going to travel to this game? I guess kind of, but also like it's not about them. It's traveling. a midweek no, random I, ass game against Ohio. I don't I don't see them being super motivated in, to bring a crowd. People in Tampa root for the Gators. Yeah. I mean, That's it's like true. they don't yeah. have to travel. Like they're, they're they're most likely Gator fans, and this could just be one of those things where it's like throw a bone. Oh, you get some alumni. The alumni right, in yeah. Tampa. So I, I don't way, know I'm what kind. Like, might I'm be a wine and cheese crowd. <laughs> might not be well, the swamp no. crowd. The- this is a meth and Mountain Dew crowd. <laughs> uh, th- what are you talking about? <laughs> Percocets and pizza. <laughs> That's that's Tampa. What do they call the highway from Kentucky down to the the uh, the opiate highway or whatever the opiate <laughs> the super. opiate express? Uh, yeah, Adi, you can clip that. Uh, all right, so we're all on uh, we're all on Ohio. First Discord pick is uh, is Florida. A shout out to them. South Carolina, the Gamecocks, heading to Birmingham, Alabama, seven p.m. local time, where they'll be facing UAB. You know, Colby, when we were making this line ahead of time, I mistakenly made the Gamecocks the favorite. Oh, oh, yeah! And then I welcome was, the UAB. Might have, uh, might have just uh, then I was unsubscribed. Che- <laughs> I was checking against the real numbers, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what a grave mistake! UAB laying. UAB 16. is a, is a bucket. I mean, you open up their Ken Palm shit, and it's just all greens. Jelly Walker is a fucking animal, oh, man. Amazing yeah. name, amazing name, amazing player. Twenty four point nine points per game, dude. They're at UAB is eleventh in offensive rating, yeah, and. 21st in offensive rebounding. So not are they obviously you're they're really good at scoring, but then when you get those second chances, the second chances are how you cover uh, a big number. And and what would scare me normally is if it in a big number especially is free throw percentage. But UAB 75.8, South Carolina shoots 62.5% from the line. That is almost dead last in the uh, in it's 340th in the nation and, and UAB also a top charting as a top 100 defensive team as well 67th currently. Meanwhile, South Carolina 300. Now I will say this: South Carolina, you know, obviously Frank Martin left South Carolina there. They got rid of him and he went to UMass. And uh, Lamont Paris comes in from Chattanooga. So I do think this team is improving game by game. They got the top recruit in the nation. Uh, and, and Gigi Jackson, and, and he seems to be coming along as well. So I do think they're getting better. I'm actually going to take them to cover the 16. I think they're going to be able to, to hang around just enough. But uh, but yeah, UAB's rolling. So they've been um, they've been big favorites at home a couple times, and they've basically covered every time except for the other time they were a 16 point favorite. I, I mean, they're covering numbers. They're, they're covering numbers, especially at home. Uh, we, we you no, look. I, I took South Carolina, buddy. You took South Carolina. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna be like a fourteen point game, something like that. You know, thirteen, wow. fourteen. Wow, look at yeah. this guy. Look at the mat- I mean, I will say, let me compliment Colby for a second. The maturity. When we first <laughs> met Colby, he he didn't know how to say underdog, <laughs> and now he's talking about UAB getting it done, but not getting it. No, Sean and I are on the right side here. Yeah, and UAB's a, a machine, it, Colby. What do you who do who wins in a fight? A rooster or a fucking dragon? Unleash the dragon! Oh. Yeah, you Love didn't it when the it. booty go da da da. <laughs> that dong da dong gong dong. I'll never forget. Uh, in my high school, I like the way they had a talent show, and this one of the oh, you did the, that song? No, no. But a friend of mine, he went up there in front of the whole fucking school and danced to Cisco's dong song. <laughs> and, like looking back, like the fucking balls on this dude, just. Massive dick. All right, uh, seven p- uh, balls in. Day. Seven p.m. on the East Coast. We're heading to Newark, New Jersey. Uh, speaking of Jersey legends, we got Seton Hall. We got Drexel. Seton Hall laying thirteen. They're playing. Where do, where do they play this? This is What's a the, great. What do they call this? The Prudential Center. The Rock. Yeah. Colby, you hate The Rock. It's one of the worst takes you have. No, I like the movie. No, no, not no, you. You don't the like person. the actor. I don't hate him. I don't think he's in good movies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow! There's a difference. Hey, Fucking hey, all right, hey. L- lawyer over yeah. here, lawyer McGee. No, over there's here. a difference. Like, come on, that's like saying you know. C- uh, the, the, I the have zero so hate. He he just bought a football league. If anything, the, I like the guy. The Rock is so charismatic. They had him cut a promo before the Super Bowl to all of America. Yeah, Super Bowl pregame stunts, bunch bullshit. The you know time. <laughs> If he ran for president, he you would. would win. You would like that. The Rock you? would hey. win 
If he ran for Land president, side. it's the beginning of idiocy. Of course, we're at dude, that point in history. Arnold, if he was born in America, he would have already been the president. No, but think about it. Who doesn't vote for The Rock? They, the wrestling crowd votes for him. Yeah, everyone but you. Arnold's better though. Oh, stop! Jesus Christ! Arnold is better. Rock's an American. Can I tell True you guys, 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 guys? I live on the cusp of Venice and Santa Monica, on and hearing cusp. this story, <laughs> hearing this story, so I have this like shopping center right across from my house. And there's a big ass clown on like a statue of a clown that's just gigantic above the building. Okay. Right? And I was curious of why this clown is there. And apparently, Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> went to buy that uh this whole city block. Yeah. And he got friction from the city of Santa Monica. So it went he to put court. A, so we it put went a clown? to court and and he won in court. And as a fuck you, he put a gigantic clown <laughs> above this thing. I, he wins me over from the start. You know what I mean? Well, and his, his CPU is a neural net processor. <laughs> uh, I like Drexel getting double digits. The point. Know. I think this is a letdown game. You got to love a scrappy team from Philadelphia and Drexel you don't have to. Drexel probably you know, outmatched here to some degree, but chase the dragon, man. They don't, they don't turn the ball over uh 30th in the nation turnover percentage on offense. And same with steel percentage. Like they don't, they're not going to give you a bunch of easy chances. Now their, their offense isn't amazing and defense, not amazing. Uh, that being said, I, I still think 13's a little high. Well, especially Seton Hall just beat Rutgers at the rack. Yeah. That's a New Jersey game. It's a big emotional game. Yeah. And Drexel, the real dragons, by the way. Not oh, this wow. UAB nonsense. All right. Uh wow. it, shots yeah. fired. L- look at what Seton Hall uh has done though. Kind of against the mid majors, I feel like they, they they've I don't know, I guess they, they did have a couple blowouts, but they've also they've also kept it close. They lost to Sienna. I mean, how about that? Uh, give me the give me the dragons. You're just searching to cover for this. a reason to fade yeah, Seton Hall. Is that what you're doing? Here? I just don't think they're a team that you feel comfortable with laying 13. They're they're a little offensively challenged. You uh, know what I mean? They're 258th in offense. They strangely require they they take a lot of free th- well they take a lot of free throw free throws and Drexel is like the one thing Drexel does good on defense is not foul and not send teams to the line. It's kind of weird because Seton Hall is not the best free throw shooting team either, but I, I tend to agree with you. Unfortunately, I think we've just given the the Discord another picks. I'm on. I'm also on Drexel. I mean, it's just a lot of points. Seton Hall is 346 yeah. in in the nation at taking care of the basketball, right? No, Drexel's not very good, but they do a couple things well that they need to to, to match up well against. They also take care of the ball, which Seton Hall generally will turn teams over, and that's that's how they stretch leads out. All right. Well, I think it's the first time we've spoken of them this year. Still 7 p.m. here on the East Coast. Richmond, Virginia plays host to the whores of Radford as they <laughs> take on VCU. Minus nine and a half for VCU. I mean, there's always, you always have little brother vibes when you have the smaller school heading to a, another smaller school, question mark, in state. I, I don't know if you have any of that here. You do have a little interstate rivalry. I do remember uh, throwing it back to my time in school when we played Radford. They tried really hard in rugby. They really wanted to beat us. Yeah. So I don't know if VCU is above them in the pecking order like Virginia Tech is, but I assume Radford gets up for this game and you just want to take the dog here. And they shoot the ball well. I mean, 45th in the nation, two point percentage. I I think they're going to be able to hang. VCU has a good defense, but to your point, this feels like an ultimate get up spot for Radford, 41st in the nation, effective field goal percentage compared to VCU, 275th. Like I, I think Radford might be a live dog in this game, honestly. Uh, and another thing is they're battle tested. Um, yeah. They went on the road to Marquette. That final score says ten. This was like a three point game with like a minute left. They went on the road to South Bend to take on Notre Dame. They lost by three. That was a neck and neck game, about a minute left. I think they can go on the road and in the way, the same way in, in a similar fashion as, as Seton Hall. VCU, great defensive team, struggles to score the ball. You're getting a big number with a team that struggles to score the ball. I think you got to take Radford. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Radford too. Just looking at their schedule, they've really uh, they've been on the road a bunch. They played some tough teams. I like it. Looks like the chat. Looks like some of the chats on Seton Hall. Um, mm. Tomcat saying Seton Hall lock. All right. And uh, you know, looking to looking to fade. I, I I think you're crazy to take Seton Hall there, but certainly not lock potential. We're are we all in Radford, huh? <sighs> I'm on well, fi- I'm on five dogs right now. Do yeah, dogs I'm, are barking. Dog. Gonna a rare horror horrors of Radford play. 
Another another dog, pick for the dog, Discord. Dog, We're giving the Discord dog, a bunch of dog. favorites squares. Another 7 p.m. tip on the East Coast. Pittsburgh. Duquesne hosts DePaul. It's a duh. It's it, this is the Berman <laughs> duh, 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 duh. Duh. Oh man, Berman talking about getting those codeine pills is just sweet, it's sweet internet time. glory. <laughs> Duquesne laying one and a half here in what should be a fun battle. Yeah, I mean Duquesne's been red hot. I mean, with the exception of the past week, uh, Duquesne's been one of the pleasant surprises in college basketball. But they are on a two-game losing streak. Unfortunately, they had to take on my New Mexico State wow. Aggies, who Hour. just had that uh, that gun charge. Assistant coach <laughs> doing some doing the Lord's work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, where are yeah. these? How how great are these assistant coaches? I mean, yeah. when I when I was playing sports, assistant coach was like the guy who threw a water bottle at my head. Um, <laughs> You know, told me I'd fuck up a wet punch, dream. Punch a chalkboard. Yeah, broke. <laughs> he broke through a chalkboard and broke his wrist. He's the guy had to get is. medical treatment and then had to reload the ch- had to drop off the chalkboard the following morning. <laughs> Doesn't I go, where are you going with that chalkboard? Yeah. Going to Shut staples. up, Green. <laughs> no, he had it. he took one from our school. I don't know if he even told the school, <laughs> but he took it from our school, took it to the other school. So where are these guys that are like oh, the coach will hide your the gun for That's you? I'm saying, man, it's loyalty. Smart. I mean, back then, yeah, we. I mean, uh, I can only speak to to high school soccer, but we definitely had a guy who was a coach who wasn't employed by the school. So. <laughs> gave there's him, always <laughs> there's always one guy. Gave him some extra liberties. <laughs> hey, funny story. He was probably related, at least something to a, a organized Italian activities. Mm-hmm. We would go by his house, and he would just have TVs and boxes. That was like the, my first <laughs> exposure. That was before the local Italian restaurant burned down. <laughs> uh, it was unrelated. Hey, um, you know, maybe these days you could probably call the assistant coach to help you burn down the, the local Italian restaurant. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, I, I mean, it, I mean, to the point, it is a nice recruiting tidbit to, <laughs> to lay that kind of stuff. You have out a there. friend for life here. All right. You're part yeah, of the program. So. Uh, Snitches get stitches. You know what I mean? And, and this game though, I think you got to monitor the injury situation. Mm, uh, yes. Your and I, the, the big man, uh, Nick Jesus. agenda, uh, the big man and uh, and uh, Caleb Murphy all game time or actually on, on Jenga's out. Uh, the other two game time decisions, and I I think uh, just hitting the road here. I think Duquesne losing two in a row. This is a bigger game for Duquesne to get back and fix things. I'm gonna take and CJ Sullivan, friend of the program, Duquesne grad. Let's go. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I didn't. You've I didn't gotten know. quite interesting. Uh, Hashtag CJ's only. Uh, I'm <laughs> actually this. This should be a, a tight game as the line reflects. Plus one and a half. I'm gonna just lean on a old tried but true set What's and take DePaul, the team that's hitting 78 and a half percent of their free throws at the line. If we're gonna have a close game, if there's gonna be intentional fouling one way or the other, mm. I'm gonna take the team that can hit 78.5 percent. I mean, we were talking about systems in March Madness and 78 and a half to Duquesne 66.7 percent from the line. That is a that's uh, almost twelve percent. That is huge. I so. think you got to worry about shots on goal though, especially with a couple big men out. <laughs> soccer, yeah. soccer, yeah. Colby over Look here. Look at this. Look at this. Seventh in shots the nation in offensive rebounding for yeah, Duquesne. They're really good. Meanwhile, the two big men for the Blue Demons. One's definitely out. The other's a game time decision. Well, but explain this to me because I'm looking at the oh. advanced efficiency stuff and it says. Uh, Duquesne's okay. Yeah, never mind. There, yeah, you're right. The I do like offensive rebounding. That's it, the like the my two favorite stats are offensive rebounding and free throw percentage. But the free throw discrepancy is so huge. I got I got to take Duquesne. Yeah, it's or, I sorry, mean, DePaul. Again, uh, we'll shout out to fellow Hokey Ken Palm. But one of the four factors for him is offensive rebounding percentage. And with the big men, with with their their big men, they're bad at it. DePaul. Yeah. And so this is a, so sometimes you have these matchups, especially in the regular season. Like th- this matchup is very clear. DePaul has to get hot from the three point line or they're fucked. And so when it's a road game, very easy to, uh, to, to take the home. I mean, just the side. rebounding edge. Yeah. I mean, have you you guys have been to Pittsburgh? Which, Everyone in Pittsburgh can build you a fucking house. I feel like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like uh, scary individuals. Yeah. It's what I'm saying. DePaul's not ready for that. No, we're, we're, uh, I mean, most people aren't ready for that, Colby. That's why. That's <laughs> oh, why a lot of people aren't. I wasn't this. ready for that when I came into the bar. I was like, I wouldn't fight anyone in this bar. Yeah, you say <laughs> someone calls you a yins, you're like, what the fuck's going on here? I'm All not right. scared of anyone from Pittsburgh. Wow. Uh, oh boy. Hey, the little PA pride. Well, that's, that's a little brother angle. Yeah. Eagles only have what one Super Bowl. I mean, you know, all right. Steelers so let's got, let's just Steelers let's got a lot. Sit, I get like it. A, all right. So city fight. 
Pittsburgh oh, versus. Pittsburgh's gonna demolish. Right? Oh, Philly gonna demolish by them. a mile. Like, you take your Rocky Balboa. You got you got Philly uh, by a mile. You got Deer Hunter against Rocky Balboa. I'll take Deer Hunter. Russian roulette. Let's go. I, I think if you t- <laughs> you if guys you, are crazy. If you took an average dude from P- Pittsburgh, like toughest dude from Pittsburgh versus toughest dude from Philly. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd watch it though. I don't know yeah. what I'm betting on. Probably Pittsburgh. Philly. Yeah. Probably by Pittsburgh. Dude, Philly anything Rust Belt um has got an edge up. Yeah. I, anything I, Rust Belt's got an edge up. Just more mass, right? There's <laughs> a little bit more mass. Like the guy from Philly's definitely gonna be a little shorter, smaller. And yeah. but scrappier, but but not as tough. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> uh, what the hell are you talking about? Well, I'm just we're handicapping a fight. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. talking that's going the Rust Belt minus anything Rust Belt minus four and a half points. All right. The you list know, just yeah. came out. Do you hear that? Is Colby <laughs> remote right now? Is he a hologram? <laughs> Can you guys see him? Anything Rust Belt. Stop <laughs> it. See not, you're fucking with me. Hey, holiday season coming this holiday season. If you're looking for a unique gift that inspires curiosity, travel, and culture, give yourself the gift of Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Maybe you can even learn how to talk like a real guy from Pittsburgh. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you'll finally be able to discover the wonder that comes with learning a new language. I've been using it to uh, help me learn Espanol so I can go down to Costa Rica. I think I've convinced myself I want to try and buy a dirt bike. So uh, I want to be able to talk to the locals about the dirt bike in Spanish. Sound like a real local with Babel. You only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. So you can start having real life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babel lessons were created by over 150 language experts voiced by real native speakers. That really uh, makes the difference. Teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. 14 different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, and German. And they got a 20 day money back guarantee right now. Get up to 55% off your subscription. When you go to babble.com slash S G P that's B a B B E L.com slash S G P for up to 55% off your subscription. Babel language for life. I'm just picturing that scene in runner runner where he's trying to get away. He's like shooting on a dirt bike around like some <laughs> fucking alligator swamp, crocodile swamp, whatever it is. That's what sh- Sean. Yeah, I hope you were joking about the dirt bike. No. Post. Oh, Jesus. Definitely want to get one. Don't oh, have no. to wear a helmet down there. Yeah, if you want to just send out and just <laughs> offer Sean some some opinions on him getting a dirt bike, I'm I'm personally one hundred percent in. We we got a guy in Houston that can train you. Oh, okay. I yeah. like it. Just all right. Never ridden a dirt bike. Gonna <laughs> get one. That's a very Pittsburgh you need, it, thing. It's to do. Uh, you're gonna have to have like yeah, exactly right. You need Pittsburgh yeah, like hands. Say, you're you a need, Philly guy, dude. You need Pittsburgh yeah. strong hands to get on that dirt bike. I, uh, Philly, I don't know if they have quite the same. See, Tomcat saying 50 cc. No, I'm a 250 guy. I was gonna say 50 cc is like something. Uh, I think my ne- my nephew rides something bigger than a 50 cc. All right, App State heads to. Uh, these, I just googled it. These are toys. I know that's what a grown man. <laughs> that's what. Oh, this is great. Uh, Sean, we all right. Can, can we have to follow your journey to the dirt bike? <laughs> the audience, I want to know, and the audience is going to want to follow. Oh, this. Okay. So. I'll I'll do some live photos of me on my sweet ass dirt bike. Oh, we're going to be you checking guys can't in. Stop me. We're Dude, gonna, next time you go to Costa Rica, I'm sure you can get one for like a dollar. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like, no, <laughs> NFL pick bringing show, down some cash right after the lock dog tees. We're going to check in with Sean's uh, <laughs> Sean's pursuit of a dirt bike. All right, apps. Speaking oh, of and, dirt- and and real quick, uh, speaking of the NFL show, we will be broadcasting live from Las Vegas. Double header. Uh, looking to start around 10 a.m. ish for the Thursday night picks podcast, uh, the or Thursday night props, and then our NFL pick show four o'clock Pacific, seven o'clock east. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, and if you don't normally watch live on YouTube, you know, give it a shot. Yeah, it'll it'll look sweet in the studio. Uh, maybe maybe do it with your wife, maybe the whole family, whatever you're into. Maybe <laughs> some it, friends. Do it with your wife. <laughs> maybe alone in a closet. Anything you want to do. Doggy style, so we can both watch the NFL pick show. Maybe you want to do it while you're watching the App State Wake Forest game. And he's one of those guys who will get penetration. We are an incredible, incredible second screen experience. Winston Salem plays host to App State Wake Lane 12 and a half here. It's a fun. It's a fun little matchup here. Little rivalry game. You know, App right. State six and four, but all four losses by single digits. Will it be lit? Sure. I mean, I guess for Wake Forest standards, will it be lit because the app? <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know if that counts for, as lit. Will it be lit because the crazies from App State made the trip? Maybe, 
Maybe, maybe. But I mean, talking I about actually, storming I, the Capitol, this is what it's going to look like <laughs> in the pretty, pretty little private school, Wake Forest, and all of a sudden these these savages from Boone show up with their pitchforks what, what did Keyshawn and flags. What Johnson call uh, call Wayne Corbett? He's like, he's a flashlight. I'm a star, <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that, that that's is for awesome. the, the lit point of view here. I, it's I like, think I think Wake Forest rolls here. I, I think they're a much better team than App mm, State. I wow. under. I understand F State hanging around with some with some uh, single digit losses, but Wake coming off a really tough loss against LSU. This is a bounce back game of all bounce back games uh, against a team that they're just much better than. It, uh, <sighs> offensively, they look a lot better. Uh, two point percentage, twenty second in the country. Wake is here's my only problem, and, and they play a little no. defense. They play a little defense. Colby's got a problem. Here's my only problem with Wake Forest. You got these these matchups against mid majors. They they only beat Fairfield by twelve, mm-hmm. Utah Valley by three in overtime, I believe. LaSalle by eight, and then they lost to Kelly LaPepe and, and Loyola Marymount. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, I mean that's a little that's a, that's that's understandable, but I mean uh, <laughs> we'll give them a pass. Come on, it's LaPepe. So, so you guys picked against him. I no, I think. <laughs> I think uh, you know. I I don't know how the hell they lost that LSU game because they had a gigantic lead in that game. Um, I think Ab's little brother here, and little brother comes in a little feisty. Give me give me the Mountaineers well, plus the points. Oh well, yeah, two game two game away. I guess a two game non home skid. Uh, kind of, I th- this also could just be a get right game. I'm kind of with Sean. I'm gonna lay the points. I think it, it, you know sometimes. You always, you always remind us that playing on the road these early in the season it, it's not reflective of what a team will do at home. Well, Wake Forest though, come on, they're Colby, Colby, you're losing your fa- uh, your fastball. We're uh, two minutes into the App State and you haven't done your toothbrush joke. <laughs> come on, I mean, do we need a performance no, review? It, toothbrush is about West Virginia. Look, no, look. he also does it for App State. I know, in Wake Forest, that environment's gonna be like a linens and things. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow, you guys know about this. You guys are NFL fans. So right? now you're 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 anti you're anti dome basketball. I well, like yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you gotta have a linen. Battleships only Wait, for hold Colby. on. What did I say last time we were watching Wake Forest? Or is that Vandermilt? Who has the elevated court? <laughs> Vandermilt. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, never <laughs> taking them at home again. That court's atrocious. I mean, that is the dome of college basketball. Like the stupid elevated court. You look like what is this? A gymnastics meet? R- relax. All right. Moving along to seven thirty on the East Coast. We're heading to Oxford, Mississippi, where Ole Miss takes on UCF. Ole Miss laying five and a half here. I'm assuming Colby will love UCF for some reason. Uh, inspiration. Well, they, they, I mean, I ate shit on taking them. I took Tarleton in the points the other day, and and UCF just just destroyed Tarleton State and Billy Gillespie. Uh, now they head to Oxford, and really UCF. When you dive into the like the their season, what a two point loss to Miami, and then an overtime three point loss in the season opener to UNC Asheville without one of their best players. They're almost undefeated. They're almost undefeated. They're playing damn good ball. They got good wins against Oklahoma State. You know, uh, Santa Clara, even Tarleton, I think, and, and Samford could win the SoCon. Pretty, pretty good resume that that the very Golden Knights are putting together there. I mean, their their two losses are combined four points. That's kind of insane. And, and meanwhile, you know, Kermit Davis got Ole Miss a little bit flying under the radar, but even their outings, okay, yeah, you got beat down by Memphis pretty bad, but kept it close with Porter Moser in Oklahoma. Uh, UCF better at the line, um, and they're both pretty good at offensive rebounding. So yeah, I, I, I I'm with you. I think this this UCF game, if they are going to lose, they're going to keep it close at the very least. Five and a half. I, I just don't. Five and a half feels like a lot to give this team that just stays in games. Yeah, let me go. Let me go. UCF too. Dogs are barking heavy today. Feel, it feels like it, right? It's a heavy flow day heavy for dogs. Day. Let's I, go. I don't have a t- I don't have a strong take on this. This one. is I'll, this I'll is ri- not a this is a, this is a pass for Ryan. It, it, yeah, this is I mean scheduled pass, n- not a real. I, honestly, I I I know you we buried this in the beginning. You, you got real estate right there in Orlando. You might get a, you probably. What do you get mean, right there? Ticket. I don't want fucking. You, how, you probably get a dare. season ticket package uh, sent to your fucking address. You Listen. know what I mean? The fact that I have to sometimes fly into Orlando is <laughs> fucking horrible. I, I'm on, I'm documented on record as stating I don't know why anyone would go to this fucking school. That's my, that direct quote. Well, because they can win, win in football and basketball. I think no, yeah, I I know, but I I would never want to spend time there. The bugs are ridiculous. I, you know what? Give me Ole Miss. 
<laughs> Give me you Omens. You're, what what are you doing? I I didn't have a take until you reminded me how much I loathe driving. If you ever drive from where, uh, Melbourne Beach uh, is where my, where my condo is, you drive across to Tampa, and there, it's just. You what might what made you go into there and just say, "Hey, you know what? This is a great place to buy a condo." Uh, <laughs> it nothing to do with me. It's where my sister settled. Okay. Long story. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> found her way to that part of Florida. It's drunks, fishermen, and old people. Beautiful across the street from the beach. Whatever. It's not fucking Orlando. All right. I don't. I don't have a farm. I don't have a farm in Orlando. Yeah, Orlando. I mean, what, I, what did Orlando do to you? All right. Nothing. It's just it's not a place you need to be. <laughs> Georgia. I, I once watched Virginia Tech and Rutgers play one of the worst bowl games in history in uh, Orlando. Do you remember that? Benedict All Danton yeah. saying, "All star handicapping." I hate the bugs in Orlando. Give me old Miss. <laughs> Uh, it's not just the bucks, but they're metaphors for everything else. Oh, man. Georgia State. I told you I didn't have a fucking take on the game. You get me hot. Georgia State heads to Auburn, Alabama. <laughs> oh, Colby, calm down over there. <laughs> 5 p.m. Oh, Kramer's getting hot. 5 p.m. on the West Coast, 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Auburn laying 20 and a half. I would imagine this is one of those games you move a lot of cars at the used car lot oh, when yeah. you're Bruce Pearl. <laughs> Uh, George, what's Georgia State doing here? Is this how much are they getting paid for this one? Oh, big bag of cash. But is uh, this a, a seven-figure game? Uh, it's got to be close yeah. to that, right? Uh, do they do that in college basketball? Oh, at yeah. All? yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I thought it was just football. No, I, I think they do it more in college basketball because there's more games, yeah. right? Yeah, um, I guess that makes sense. But uh, look, Auburn's coming off their first loss of the season, so this is a revenge spot. You see the big number? They want you to take Georgia State. Ron Hunter's not coaching there anymore. Even Georgia Lanier's State, gone, they, yeah. uh, Ken Palm has. I've never seen this shade of red to describe Georgia State's three point percentage. So bright. I got to zoom in. Three hundred and sixty third in the nation shooting the three ball. See what what's fun sometimes, Sean. I like that you're. They using, they I, are much better though shooting the free throws. I like that you're, you're on 14, Ken Palm now, yeah. but you got to click on it. So when the number's that bright, you got to click on it just to verify. Oh yeah, that means it's the worst team. There oh, are wow. 363 teams. <laughs> they are the worst team in the nation shooting the three. Isn't that fun? And that is why Auburn lay the 20 and a half. So mm. this is a bounce back really? spot for the used car salesman. Just they're going to fuck them up. Welcome to the jungle. You can't, you gotta be able to hit the three of the jungle. I, I think, but they, they hit their free throws. I, I guess I'm just concerned. How much are they going to get to the line? Auburn shoot 66.7% for Auburn, Georgia state 80.7. That's the only thing they really seem to do well. And Auburn's defense is actually Auburn's defense is number one in not putting people to the line. So I'm with Colby. I'll take Auburn, but why we don't need to get involved in this game. This is all right. So Georgia state has not played a single team in the top 120 of Ken Palm. I mean, their, 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 vi their last victory was off middle Georgia state. <laughs> I'm, I I like, I, we, we do a lot of stuff with college sports. I've never heard of middle Georgia state. <laughs> Have you uh, probably go, just go, picking, Colby probably doesn't. just picking that game, but I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah, let's go. I, we we've been pretty dog heavy so far. Let's uh, let's take let's take chalk and give give the Discord a little nice juicy Georgia State dog Auburn by a million. UC Riverside heads to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks. Ducks laying thirteen and a half here. Six p.m. tip here on the West Coast. UC Riverside, uh, Colby, tell us uh, any fun players on UC Riverside this year. They often have a. They're good. Uh, yeah, they're a good team. I mean, they they they, they keep a decent basketball program. If you look at their three losses, one was to Cal Baptist in a very close game, and Cal Baptist keeps a good program as well. Yeah, we like them. And then uh, the other two were were powers. So yeah, Creighton and Colorado, yeah, two, two, yeah. two fifty top fifty teams according to Kempom. So. So, uh, and this, this spreads a little bit off. They played last year, a six point game. And I think one of the things you got to pay attention to here is the injury report. Jermaine Cousinard, uh, the South Carolina transfers out for the ducks. Keyshawn Bartholomew, the Colorado transfers out for the ducks. Uh, also, uh, Ethan Butler is out and they have a game time decision on another player, uh, Nate Biddle. So I, oh, I think you have Oregon. to take Riverside yeah. here. 
Yes, yeah, this Oregon, one you can bring your toothbrush. R- Riverside. Yeah. Wait, for who? For Riverside. Riverside. Yeah. Wow. Oregon has some methy folks up there. They I might not be say. Brushing. Yeah, bring your deodorant, too. <laughs> Oregon's <laughs> very like, stay off my lawn, so it's probably bring your own toothbrush. Well, kind of outside of Eugene. I Eugene don't th- itself is like, uh, hey, Mike, oh. we're getting a drag queen for my kid's birthday party. And we, uh, Outside of Eugene, though. They also share a toothbrush. So I guess both <laughs> reasons, for both reasons, you probably want to bring a toothbrush. Uh, <laughs> Oregon, though, worst in the nation at putting teams at the line. Now, I don't know if UC is going to be able to uh, convert. They are 259th in the nation at free throw percentage, but just the fact that they're going to get a bunch of free looks and a free 13 and a half points, UCR <laughs> all day. Yeah. It's a great way to explain the spread. You get free points. You ever made the trip from San Bernardino to Riverside? It's a what do you mean? Drive. Have I ever made the trip? Just like you're. <laughs> I, I do youth soccer. Dude. It's, that's how. That's it's where like a lot going, of it happens. It's like going. Are we all in Riverside? Yeah. We are. Yeah. No man, this is a dog dog oh, edition. If it comes down to it. Give me California over Oregon all day. You want one another another uh, super sharp handicap chat? Western Kentucky heads to Louisville to take on the worst college basketball team in the land. I'm not sure why Louisville's having a 9 p.m. local time game. Probably, uh, probably to, to make sure that no one's watching. Uh, yeah, maybe <laughs> Western Kentucky is late. We were we were talking this number out before the show, and I, I basically did my thing where I say, "Well, the numbers say this," and Colby decides if we should shade it high or low, and we we came on four and a half, and Colby kind of had that look like I don't know, I don't know who's betting, I don't know who's taking Louisville at that number. It opens at seven. Yeah, Western Kentucky laying seven. So obviously you're paying a tax because Louisville's been complete trash. But well, why would we do any like how do you take uh, Louisville? You know, especially you look at last year and Louisville was much better and they lost by well, 10. Yeah, I mean uh, <laughs> could they be much worse than 0 and 9? Like it's What and what is Kenny Payne doing on his press conference? A couple nights ago he's like he's he's talking he's doing his press conference he said we haven't even reached bottom yet. What do you mean? And I'm like well, aren't you supposed <laughs> you're 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 a first year coach you're 0 and 9. We you're haven't probably going to get fired if you don't get your shit together. Why don't you at least give some enthusiasm? You know, we're getting better even if they're not. We're getting better. Florida uh, State was trying to do the same thing as Louisville. They then played Louisville and <laughs> fucked them up. Like that. Well, you gotta and you gotta know if you know Western Kentucky Hilltopper fans, which but by the way, yeah, in a, Bowling Green, Kentucky, oh, bro, they, come on, they keep that. That is a great <laughs> they, fan base. So you know how they're hard. seeing blood in the water right now. Like ooh, they. Suck. I wouldn't be surprised. Look, if Louisville home games have not been lit this year because they're going to get destroyed. I'm thinking. I'm thinking a ton of Western Kentucky fans are going to come down there to go to this game. It's going to be a Western Kentucky crowd, I bet. Yeah, they're going to storm the court when they win, too. Oh, that would <laughs> be awesome. That's going to be great. East Western Houston. Kentucky by a million. Yeah, I, yeah let's I mean, go. How can you take this Louisville team? The mojo's bad. It, like every statistical category, they look completely horrible. And I mean, Western Kentucky is a huge team, too. Like one of Louisville's like standout things that you notice is their size, and they don't even, I mean, nothing about you can't take Louisville. I don't care. We can be stupid and take the chalk. All right, another six p.m. tip here on the game West. of the night. Another nine p.m. tip on the East Coast. We're Big Ten, to- Big Ten future <laughs> matchup, future Big yeah. Ten conference matchup. College Park, Maryland hosts UCLA and Maryland. UCLA, uh, small favorites here. Again, probably th- this is probably a public perception number. Uh, wrong team is favored, I think. Right. Based on the environment, based on where it is, I know we joke and say they're going to be conference uh, foes soon. This is a a very long trip. <laughs> Bless you, but Bless you, buddy. They are yeah. tipping off late. Not that body clock really matters with college basketball. Doesn't that help UCLA? Then? But this is a yeah, this is a UCLA uh, time. I just think from a lit a litness uh, standpoint, just, and they used to have one of the best crowds in all of college basketball. But ever since they moved of, to the Big Ten. They've lost some interest. Yeah, this is one of Colby's yeah. big like they oh, fucked up. Dude, they that was the best. This. That was nothing better than going to watch a game and catching a battery to the head. Um, the, another situation where a team was away from home, they're now coming home. Feels like a potential get right spot for them. I, you know, I like the upset here. I think I think Maryland is is uh, is going to get it. I disagree. I am going U- UCLA here. They're the veteran team, you know, and I think, you know, you look this, back at this, the- this team to your point, Colby has played in some big spots already. Yeah. I think, I think Maryland's a good team might surprise some people, but I think they're, 
they're really no in over their skis as far as like a big game in a big spot at a big time. Like to, to you know, playing this at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, Tiger Campbell, Jaime Hawkins, these guys have been there forever. I think they got the experience Ice water down the stretch face. to make the plays, to get them a dub with a line this short. Give me UCLA minus one. Another Island game for those keeping track. It's Ole Miss, Maryland and Akron, New Mexico state last game for us on the slate, my boys, 7 PM on the West coast. Both New Mexico teams are off to an amazing start. We're heading to the yay area where St. Mary's is laying 14. I mean, obviously you put this here so we could take New Mexico state. Well, I mean, look, their coach was so close to getting away. Look, look at this. So their last game, their last game was in Pittsburgh at Duquesne. The game before that was at Santa Clara, which is in the Bay area as well. If they could have just gotten out of the state of New Mexico with that pistol, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was so close. You good luck tracking down Well, he was in Pittsburgh. Let's send a team to Pittsburgh. Let's send a team to, uh, to San Francisco. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was so close getting out of there. And uh, yeah, look, crime pays. Give me the plus 14. <laughs> you think team building. That was a team bonding moment. Is that this what is, I mean, New Mexico state's fourth in the country at the three ball and uh, St. Mary's doesn't hit their free throws. Even like, their logo has the pistols. Yeah. You know what they're, I mean? Like they're just great. Uh, New Mexico state. I th- even if they're out, I think they're going to be chucking up some threes, you know, s- oh, they defend the three. They, they shoot the three. Well, they defend the three. Well, what, what, what's more to like, they take care of the ball relatively. Yeah. They, they, I, I mean, it's a decent matchup to catch this many points. No, this is easy money. And I think they're a live dog as well. St. Mary is always overrated. Dog. Ooh. Always overrated. Ooh. I mean, it's like that weird thing where they're overrated because they're in the same conference in as Gonzaga and they're always the second best team. Yeah. It is a weird overrating, but I know what you mean. Well, last year they lost by like a million points to, to Gonzaga. It was like it just didn't Ah, uh, they're a well coached team, man. They get they the are, maximum they're out of their roster. Okay, I so think, or, or yeah. would you say this is like a, a team that should be fringe top twenty five? And we have breaking news. Yeah. Maryland is actually laying a point now. Really? So I'll take UCLA plus one. Oh, what do you mean beautiful. breaking noise? Beautiful. Breaking noise? What? <laughs> breaking news. What do you, uh, you you do this for every game or just when it conveniently that, helps you? Ones that favor my you see my what, pick. See what's going on here? <laughs> Benedict, get that Benedict music going. Where are you seeing this number? <laughs> In the chat. I I interact. Oh, with the I, chat. I don't know where this guy gets his number. Benedict Antold, this guy has the best information. <laughs> Actually, most times when the chat gives us information, it ends up being horribly wrong. I trust Benedict Dan told with my life. All right, time for the lock dog and bonus lock brought to you by sports gaming podcast.com slash win bet bet a hundred dollars. Get a hundred dollar free bet. Kramer. What do you got? Another way to say it would have been, wow. You and Colby were onto something thinking Maryland or sorry you, but I mean, you were with me before the show. Somehow you flipped to the other side. Maryland should be favored. So you c- thank you for the compliment. I'm sure you meant it that way. All right. Lock. I, now I I kind of feel like this is a sign. Lock Maryland. Ooh, ooh. Sean playing with fire over there. Hey, all right, if you need, all right. You know what's Ryan's going on? Being a baby. Sean is fucking carrying the ring, and the powers are getting to him. And I can see him t- tipping his uh, uh, tipping. I'm he's looking over the edge into the dark, t- dark the 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 the, 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 the I, abyss known as Tout. Kingdom. I have literally no like, idea what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> Maryland plus one. What else you got? Who's your oh, no, no, no. You need make, the you need the point. Maryland minus you need one. the point. Make it Maryland. You need it. You I don't need, need the fucking point. He needs it. It's a public perception point. Like I said, the public's fucking wrong. <laughs> the public's wrong Sean, by making Maryland. Sean favorite. needs got this. it. He needs the shake up. Got it. He needs the shake. <laughs> He's rechanging all the picks. <laughs> Next lock. Let's Let's take another favorite. Even though I took all these dogs today, another favorite Auburn lay all the points by a million. A lot of, lot of cars leaving Low the lot. mileage, a lot of cars leaving the lot. Uh, last Lee let's let's uh, oh man. A lot of big dogs. Which big dog do we like the most? Dog. Mm, give me uh, let's go Riverside Riverside on the money line. Let's fucking go. I like that. I, it would be against my brand to take uh, Radford. All right, for me, lock UCLA plus one. 
We'll take really? a dead sweet CLV. Really? Just putting it right in Kramer's really? place. Uh, my other lock, New Mexico State plus 14. Are you kidding me? Mount St. Mary's criminally overrated. There's a lot of dogs I like. Uh, Kramer took UCR, which I also like. I'm going to toss in uh, Radford here. I think Radford is a good uh, money line play. This is a get up spot for <laughs> Radford against VCU. Uh, right. Colby. What do you got? Colby, stay on theme with the dogs. It's all about needing to clean something, some part of the body. Riverside, it's a toothbrush. Radford, well, we've explained <laughs> that before. We are gonna lock up. We're we're gonna start at, let's start things off with Radford plus the points. Ooh, okay. I like that. Yeah, let's go. Uh, the bonus lock will be uh, well, Western Kentucky minus seven. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good play. Um, Just fade Louisville. <laughs> Uh, and then dog wise, let's uh, let's have some fun with the Ohio Bobcats. I think the Ohio Bobcats mm. could win that game. Also, probably a place where you're best to bring a toothbrush. <laughs> All right, do we want to do a? I think feel like this is a good episode to do a money line round robin. Oh yeah, I like it. So Radford put them in UCR. Wow. I do like New Mexico State, but maybe 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 we just go what, Ohio. What about a little Drexel Dragon talk, huh? Or no, no. no. Okay. Uh, I, I like your Ohio. Play don't get better. cute. Do we? Why don't we just go with our locks? Radford, UCR, Ohio. Round robin on the money line. Big dogs gonna eat. The chat's asking if we're doing an FCS show. Uh, yes, what? we will be doing a college football show later on in the week, and you can always get uh, FCS football on the college football experience. Hey, subscribe, rate, and review. Toss us a nice rating. In the uh, Apple Podcast, always appreciate that. Make sure you get in on the SGPN Bowl Challenge exclusively on the SGPN app. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Changing numbers. Kramer, let it ride.